All right. Looks like we've got uh, enough people here. Um, do we need to uh, call this meeting to order? Or can we just jump right into it? I would say we would go ahead and call it to order um, so we can make sure that we make this official and we are recording it. Okay. Is it live anywhere? No, it's not live, but uh, we will put it on our web page and, and that kind of stuff so it, it's accessible. Okay. Fantastic. All right. Well, well Eddie, we will go ahead, Dale. I was looking at the minutes of the last Park Board meeting, which you just distributed today, and it said that the question was raised about whether this is an open meeting and Ms. Arlensky was going to look into it. I never heard anything back. Was there a determination made? Uh, is Elizabeth on here? No, she's she's not on the call. So my understanding is that it, it is an open meeting. That's why we're going to post it afterwards. But can people participate in viewing it online? We did not set that up for online viewing. Um, primarily, the, the interaction is with the board members. Um, that's why I want to post it afterwards. So if, if people have any questions, they can see what was discussed. Well, I have a concern about that, just in terms of meeting the requirements of the Open Meetings Act. It's nice to have a formal legal endorsement of that so we don't get in trouble. I mean, there are no public meetings that are closed to the public unless we're in executive session. Well, I, isn't um, a board retreat a little bit of an anomaly? You know, it's it's not it's kind of its own animal. Um, I mean, this isn't the first board retreat for the park district that I've participated in. Um, the last one, I believe, was at Botanica, and it, it wasn't open to the public. It was more of a discussion about goals, priorities, um, a typical kind of, you know, um, strategic planning discussion for an organization, um, which we could share with the public. But I, I don't know. Um, I'm not of the mindset that this is kind of your usual meeting that requires um, you know, sort of the public to participate. It's not necessarily a matter of them participating. It's a matter of them uh, being being an open meeting, similar in some ways to the city council's workshop. The public doesn't testify on those. They're not allowed to do that, but it's an open meeting. Um, I understand what you're saying. And then and, and nonprofits have been involved with and you have retreats, you do this. But we're not a nonprofit. We are a public entity. I, I, I'm fine with it. I don't want to get in trouble. I know there are people who are interested in this who may want to watch it live. Uh, putting it on after the fact may satisfy it. But that's a lawyer's question. I'm not a lawyer, but I don't want to go to jail. Well, I think uh, I remember the retreat that Ty is talking about. I think it was a couple of years ago. I'm not sure we had one last year. Um, no. Since that was not readily, it, readily available to the public, um, and I think we just kind of go ahead here and, and get started. So I'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. Um, I'm trying to admit Tori says the action has failed, but we'll go ahead and call this uh, retreat to order. All in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed. Motion passes. All right. Let's uh, let's go to item number one on the agenda here. It is kind of a broad topic that we've talked about a lot in the past couple years. Um, it is <laughs> and golf. So um, Troy is uh, Mr. Hendricks on. No, it was just uh, uh, myself. Um, well, I, maybe he is. I think, I think he, he is. is. Yep. So, I'm here. Okay. so if there are any questions, you know, regarding uh, numbers, um, 
Let's see here. Tori's trying to get in. I'm trying to admit her. I'm not sure if I'm allowed, but. Oh, I'm um, trying to admit her and she's not coming in. So yeah. I don't know what's going on. So um, let's go ahead and get started uh, with golf. Troy, did you want to bring up anything? Um, I forgot. We just closed the month uh, Monday night. I worked on some of the rounds of sports stuff yesterday. Don't have a way to send out yet. Uh, did have a very good month uh, rounds. Uh, we're a little over 10,000. Uh, let me see here. We have 10,995 rounds. I think I'm going back looking through rounds. Um, comparisons that we have to go back to 2002 to get a, a year that exceeded 10,000 rounds in the month of November. Um, so we had a very good month. Um, financially, uh, we'll be in, we're in, we're in a much better shape than we were a year ago. Um, the tentative numbers are that we will be uh, at a four, about four hundred seventy thousand uh, dollars as a net profit through the first eleven months, which is uh, much better than we had projected. Um, if the weather stays nice here in December, we should have a good December. Um, so, I'll be getting that rounds report out to everybody here in the next couple days uh, after I finish going through all the other numbers and stuff for the. Comparing the rounds per month, and those numbers. So right, I was working on another project uh, today for something for, for Elizabeth Erlinski and Mr. Altman. So I haven't finished up the rounds report yet. What was the what was the dollar amount again in the black? Uh, I believe it was around four hundred and seventy thousand dollars. That's quite a bit up from the hundred and forty we announced last month. Yes. Any um, further questions? Eddie, I'm going to set some parameters for this discussion. This, those are things we would normally talk about at the park board meeting, and I've got some in the wake of the council meetings yesterday, the city council meeting, wanted to talk about our actions and how they interact with the council. Um, do you, I mean, Mr. Hendricks, information is useful, but are we going to talk about a, a bigger picture thing here or? Yeah, I, I think that's what I was going to bring up. If nobody had any other further questions on the December report, um, you know, I think there's a, kind of an elephant in the room here that, you know, there's been discussion um, of first T um, kind of taking over, if you will, the management, the operations of the golf Troy, did you want to uh, kind of brief everyone on on the latest there? I think you're on mute there, Troy. There we go. So about three weeks ago, we had a meeting with some of the folks from First T. We discussed some of the points that they were really interested in. They shared how they wanted to do some uh, investments into the golf courses and what they want to do as far as their business plan. From that, they actually developed some offering points and we received those about a week and a half ago. Uh, the city manager and I have talked a little bit about them and we provided some responses to that. Uh, I have a meeting scheduled with them tomorrow to discuss a little bit more about what those negotiating points are. And that's about where we're at. I have a question, Eddie, if you might. Yeah, go ahead. I watched yesterday's council meeting. The mayor asked for an update on this. That's a lot more information than was provided to the council. Why is there a difference? I think yesterday I told him that we we're looking at all options. OK, that really wasn't the answer to his question. You're, what you just said here is the answer to the question. Um, there seems to be reluctance to engage a public perspective on this Eddie's point about this is a big big deal mm -hmm. I guess the, the bigger picture question I'm interested in talking about Eddie is where do we fit in 
and the thing's kind of running on autopilot and uh, I'm, I don't understand why the council wasn't brought up to date with the information you just talked about, Troy. Uh, there's some reason not to do that? Uh, I think I gave them a, an honest answer. We were looking at options. We've been talking to First Tee. Uh, the mayor knows that we're talking to First Tee. He's been briefed. Um, I, I don't know what else I could have provided. Okay, where do we is fit there in? A, uh, is there a certain timetable that, um, you know, this is going to take place? Is, is it there any possible way that, you know, it could happen as fast as the first quarter of next year? Or is this is this kind of going to draw out for a longer period of time with legal involved and, and everything else? So I think we're right now still in it very much exploratory in regards to how they're going to manage, if they are going to manage, uh, what their expectations are, what the expectations are of the city and the council. So uh, th there is no timeline. I don't have a deadline to make anything happen. So I think it's just very much preliminary in regards to what these expectations are. And I think we got to put that down first before there's really any movement forward. But uh, as those things go forward, they will be looking at them in regards to what are the legal requirements, what are um, some of the some of the things that we really need to make sure that we're not stepping out of bounds on whether it's permitting, whether it's taxes, uh, what, what it is in regards to financing. Um, so there's a lot of things that can be answered. It sounds like we're very early on in the process. Okay, Eddie, my, I still have my question. Where does the public work fit into this process? The way I see this is that after we get a few things finalized, get a foundation of an agreement, I think then we bring that to uh, the Golf Advisory Committee and then to the Park Board as well. I'm sorry, at that point you'll have a formal proposal with all the details attached? I'm sorry, Mr. Goder. At that point, will you have a formal proposal from First Tee with all the details attached? There are a lot of operating questions that need to be addressed. Uh, what is? What do you expect from the park board? I mean, that's why we're here. So what's our role in this? Do we have uh, veto power? Do we have an advisory role? Are we going to look at the specifics? Uh, what do you What do you see for us? Well, most definitely advisory. I think that's why we'd want to bring it to the golf advisory committee as well as the park board. Um, I think the council will take a, a lot of interest into what the golf advisory committee. Uh, shares or what their opinions are as well as what the park board thoughts and ideas are as well. Um, but uh, it, it's really important that we sit down, and put a foundation together before we even uh, have an offer in place because uh, th there's so many parameters that haven't been answered yet. Uh, things are very much in concept, not necessarily even uh, obtainable in some regards. So I think we need to get those things answered first. So I just have a question. So is it fair to say that, um, you know, this could be a minor um, sort of outsourcing or sort of at the more extreme end is kind of a full privatization with First T um, leading that, that operation going forward? Is that kind of the range that we're talking about? And somewhere in the between those two poles is where we're likely going to end up. Is that what you're thinking right now, Troy? So I think it's most definitely going to be a situation where First T is managing all the day-to-day -day operations of the golf course. That's kind of what they put together in their first offering points, uh, their interest in regards to managing the golf course. Uh, however, I think we will still need to have a very important part that includes uh, the park board as well as staff in regards to long-range vision and operations of the golf course because, as I said yesterday, um, even though we're in the black, we're still millions of dollars short in regards to investment and uh, taking care of the infrastructure of the golf courses. 
I had a question about that, Troy. If, the, in fact, that millions of dollar obligation is out there, is the expectation that First T will meet those millions of dollars of expectation? That's kind of what we're trying to pin down. Um, Where do they have the money to do that? That's what we're trying to pin down. <laughs> Troy, question for you. Do we, is this something that needs to be opened up for other organizations to submit, you know, a proposal as well? So that's above my pay grade. Uh, sure. Something that was discussed, and I think the city manager wants to see what this offer is going to be um, and, and kind of figure out if that's the direction we want to go or not. That kind of gets back to that process question. Would have been useful perhaps for this concept to be run by the park board from the beginning. If it, it wasn't, that's, that ship sailed. But that kind of undermines my confidence in it that we're not involved in it from the beginning. Um, again, the bigger picture thing is what ultimately, where does the park board fit in? Uh, I, in if it's, as you said, when it's a final draft, then we get to weigh in on it. That's if that's what it is. That's what it is. That's uh, not very smart. There are a lot of folks who have insight in the operations of golf far beyond this group in this community. And when you ignore the folks who have the information, you do that at your peril. I mean, there are some really troubling questions that need to be addressed and, and should be avoided. I don't, I don't want this to be a, my gut is for the, for the preservation of public golf, the public interest. I don't care about anything else. I don't care about sustaining first tee, making Kemper wealthy, bailing out you. That's not my concern. The concern is the public interest of preserving a sustainable, quality, affordable public golf system. I'd like to see that come to the table in that form before you go down a road looking for an answer that you've actually looked at the necessary parameters. Well, I'm glad you and I are on the same page because it's my goal to preserve a quality golf system for this community. Eddie, it may just be that this is not a time for this board to even talk about it. We don't have anything to talk about. Although that question of process troubles me, um, the communication, the other point raised at the meeting, the mayor asked about what happened to the park board 6-1 vote to recommend the curtailment of the furloughs that never got to the council. I was just looking at the minutes of the GAC. They recommended by motion. No, that was the park board actually recommended a $1 increase in cart rentals. That never went to the council. What use are we if the actions this act, this body takes never get to the council? I don't understand that. Why do people tolerate this? And that's the answer. <laughs> so to let you know the process I went through, I did take both of those to the city manager and he shared it with Council, um, I think in his thinking is that uh, the dollar increase, we wanted to wait and see what happens with the situation with First T. Um, and once we get a little bit more background information, we'll be able to know what direction we should go. Uh, in regards to the furloughs, I also did that with the city manager, as well as you all did that with. Uh, all the council members and because I was CC yeah. you know and um, the di direction I got was that we needed to make sure that we have plenty of reserves in, in place. Well my big concern is that there is two hundred and forty three thousand dollars of golf revenue that goes to pay the salaries of the city manager, human resources, the finance department, city clerks, all those people's salaries are partially paid by those golf revenues, and yet they don't share in the burden. It's all placed on the 21 employees of the golf division. That is patently unfair. As Greg Ferris said in our previous GAC meeting, it's criminal. I don't understand why that's not brought forward. Is that not a concern to the park board as well? That these are 
grossly unfair practices that make no financial sense and make no moral sense. Well, I'll, I'll save that for the park board meeting next week. If you want to move on from that, it's just uh, these are troubling, troubling aspects of this whole golf division. And the common theme is the park board is largely ignored and is largely mute for the most part on central questions that affect the future of public golf. At some point, you got to own that, or what's the point of being here? Troy and Troy, a right, question for you guys. The as it pertains to golf, do we have, or would we be able to see, you know, a comparison of uh, financials, you know, through December from 2019 and 2020? Because if I remember correctly, 2020 is officially the year that we got we we transitioned from five courses to four courses, and we also added the subscription piece to the golf system. I mean, you know, when, when, I guess when. When when I think about the future of golf, I mean, this year has been a transition year for the city of Wichita's golf department and all of our courses. And so I guess I would just caution us to make any decisions before we see what the results of this, the changes that we put to put in place in 2020, what the results of those changes are. So that was a little what we talked about yesterday at the, in regards to the budget adjustment that we went through. This year is a really difficult year to really make comparisons because we had courses. Uh, normally, we're open for 104 weeks worth of golf with all four golf courses. We were actually closed 20 weeks, and plus that, uh, there was also situations where we decreased the amount of tee times uh, to spread things out in regards to COVID. So COVID has been a huge impact on all this. Uh, obviously, the impact of um, closing down CLAP has had a positive right. impact in regards to overhead and expenses, but it's been really hard to really compare apples to apples. But whatever you guys want to see, I know Mr. Hendricks has put together a lot of pieces of information. Uh, we've shared a lot of this with Mr. Goder in the past and with the Golf Advisory Committee, uh, and we're doing the same thing, providing this information to council as I, well. I guess, Troy, the, the reason why I bring that up is because I mean, I, I, I know, I guess it, it sounds like First Tee is the one who approached us about, you know, possibly helping or running our golf system. And I don't know, I don't know all the ins and outs, and I just know what, what's what been shared with us and what's been shared with the public. But um, I guess, would this be the best year for us to even consider that? Or is that something that we want to look at at the end of 2021? Because... I mean, like you just said, 2020 has been a big transition year for our golf system, and this isn't a good year to compare what we've, what's happened this year with what's happened in the past because, I mean, to your point, I mean, we went from four courses to five or from five to four, but we've also been dealing with a pandemic and have had to change the way we operate our courses, unfortunately, uh, to accommodate those things. And so I would, I would just caution – uh, you know, the city to 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 think twice before we say we want we want uh, we want to allow First Tee to run our golf courses based off of 2020. And, and I agree. I think that's part of the things that we're exploring. And, and as they've made some negotiating points of what what and how they want to invest into the golf system, is that enough? Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, and I talked about it a little bit today, is that even though we're in the black, <clears throat> we're still millions of dollars short in regards to investments into the golf system. Um, we're, we're working with outdated equipment. We're working with um, uh, substandard irrigation systems, and, and the list goes on and on and on. We have to upgrade the bridges. We have to update the cart path, just on and on. Now, is there a way that we can do that? Uh, that, that's what we're trying to find out if First Tee is available to do that or not. So we'll uh, Leo, you make an excellent point about uh, looking at 2020 and one thing to recognize, it was asked at the council meeting yesterday, is the resurgence of golf a one-off or is it sustainable? One thing to consider, we were closed for six weeks during the prime revenue times. We probably forfeited at least a half million dollars of revenue. Had we stay open like every other public course in the area did, 
we would probably be five or six hundred thousand in the black. And then that's a much better position from which to uh, if you need millions of dollars and you're making five hundred thousand every year, you have enough money to meet that obligation. You could bond that. You certainly could have a we have no plan. I mean, what's the number one irrigation priority that needs to be addressed? Can we put that on the agenda? If you have a similar year next year to this year and you operate the same way, logic dictates you're going to have a, a cushion in place to work with. So Aleo's point, I think, is excellent. I, I, I certainly think that's worth considering. But again, Aleo, the process doesn't allow us to weigh in at this point. Um, that's, a, that's a question that should have been asked from day one. But well, nonetheless, I think that's on the table. Well, maybe this isn't the meeting, but maybe at the park meeting on Monday, you know, maybe that's a recommendation that we can, a motion that we can make that we recommend that, you know, we pause, that our, we would recommend that the city pause consideration of that. And Troy, I don't know if that's, if, if that's appropriate or not, but, I, and, and I know we're just exploring, but I would just hate for us to get down the road, you know, two miles down the road with first tee for us just to say, well, actually, guys, we were just wanting to hear what you wanted to say. We're not really going to let you operate our courses. Um, and I don't know. I, again, like I said, I, I don't know if that if that's the role that we play in this. But from my perspective, I would I wouldn't even consider it just because 2020 is not necessarily a comparable year to other years. And I'd love to see what 2021 looks like before we even start exploring, you know, who who operates our courses and. You know whether we whether we're making drastic changes after we've already made two big changes uh, to our system. You make that motion on Leo next Tuesday and I, or Monday and I'll second it and I'll have a dozen people there to speak in favor of it. <laughs> well, no, it's, I, I, this is this is common knowledge around the community. Nobody that I talk to thinks this is going down the right path right now. And your point is so well taken. It is a matter of timing. Uh, there certainly need to be something done, and I commend the manager for you know thinking of something. But he's way off base on process here. These are four public courses that need to be handled with gentle care, and right now we're getting it rammed down our throat in, in not a good fashion. But nonetheless, uh, Aleo, think about that. I'll be happy to support that, and and there would be widespread support, not from first tee certainly. I mean, they've identified that they're going to take $1.4 million out of the system over 10 years as their cut. When Troy says we don't have millions of dollars, well, there's, that's kind of contradictory to what we might do. So, um, and, again, I, I think you're right. Putting it off to the next board meeting might be the thing to do. And, I mean, to be honest with you, both Troy's, I think that you guys are doing an exceptional job of running our courses. I think they're, I mean, with the, re with the scarce resources, that are available to you guys, to the team. Y'all are doing an exceptional job. Um, and I, I hope that you all know that. I I just want to ensure that we're we're not getting too far ahead of ourselves um, and allowing ourselves to really see the results of the changes that we put in place last year. I, I just have a, a process question if we're talking process. Is it possible, Troy, to um, have you report back on resolutions that we pass? So we, you know, so if city council just isn't supportive of the position we take, we at least have some some resolution of the conversation that, that we had, the discussion that we had. Is that possible so we can just stay informed? I think Del raised a pretty good point on, you know, what becomes of some of the positions that we take. So what I do after the meeting, there is a request from the park board. I share that with the city manager. I share that with him uh, in regards to the two cases that were most recently in regards to uh, the furloughs um, and cart uh, fees. Cart fees. Yeah, the cart fees. Thank you. So we put that up the the ladder, and I share that with the city manager. Uh, he discusses it with council i think on behind the scenes I, I i'm not there i'm not part of that process uh but what i do get feedback is what direction to go so city manager had directed me uh that we were going to continue with the furloughs uh, the city manager directed me that we are not going to put the dollar fee increase in front of the council until we get more concrete resolution about 
the other options in regards to first tee. OK, the perception from that is that the manager goes to the council, gets the consensus and then takes action. That would be in gross violation of the Open Meetings Act. The council cannot take an action by a serial vote, by making phone calls one to another. That's that's just patently illegal. The manager is not doing that. He's making the decision on his own. He might talk to one or two, but there is no consensus from the council because the way that is done under the Open Meetings Act is you take a vote at the bench. Mm -hmm. You don't have a private meeting with the manager and take public policy out of the hands of the public. That's insulting to think that that's going on. Uh, I hope you communicate to the manager that that that's not an answer. If he wants to make the decision himself and not go to the council, then own up to that and just tell us that. Then we can quit doing this, playing this charade game. We're not really and I communicate to my appointed authority. Uh, and I'm sure you all do the same. But this isn't how it works. This isn't government. This is this is this is a travesty. And for the folks who spend time, the Golf Advisory Committee, the Park Board, discussing something, making a reasonable uh, recommendation, and having it ignored and buried is an insult. But uh, let's not pretend the council's signing off on this. That's an, that, that's just not accurate. And that gets back to this question of, as a retreat, perhaps a formal action would be some recommendation that we get taken seriously that the park board is that at the uh, tie you made a good point about that some way just to have somebody report back that'd be sufficient just just dignify the fact we took an action if you say hell no fine tell us hell no and then we're done but to have it get buried without recognition is more insulting Okay, is there anything else on golf? Are we going to have a formal product? I think I will say. Meeting? What do you mean by that? Like, a, a, do we take action? Do we uh, make recommendations? Or does it go to a park board meeting to follow up? Is this just kind of feeling our way through it? And, and that's fine. I, Hoyt, you're at the, at the 2018 meeting. Is that is that the outcome of that? Um, yeah, hi, uh, this is Hoyt. Uh, I was reviewing the minutes of the uh, 2018 meeting and uh, one of the outcomes of it was that uh, we uh, as a group decided that it was appropriate uh, for uh, the park department that uh, the park department uh, turns in a weekly report to the city manager on things that have happened and uh, Maybe that's the place where it's supposed to happen. At that meeting, uh, at that retreat, we decided that uh, park boards should really get weekly follow-ups on what's going on with uh, interactions with the city manager. And uh, I think those took place for a while, but they've dropped off. Maybe those should start up again. That kind of speaks to the attitude that the administration and council has about the park board. <laughs> if that's what you asked for and you never got it, um, it kind of speaks volumes. But I think that's a good idea. I, I think that would be a useful thing to have a regular formal communication from the manager through the council in recognition of the actions the park board takes. Would you not all want to see that just as a validation of our efforts? I certainly would. Troy, do you have a uh, like a standing weekly meeting with the manager that you can take some quick notes on? Or? I do not. I have a meeting with the city manager on a case by case basis on whatever particular topics are hot at that time. Troy, don't you have a department head meeting every Monday? We do. OK, so. Isn't that an opportunity to pass along from your advisory group? You're the only one that's burdened with an, well, I guess, transit's got an advisory group. I don't, I don't envy you having to deal with us. Uh, no other department has to do that, but uh, sorry. But isn't that an opportunity where you could regularly communicate to him and the rest of the department heads what you heard from us? I, I suppose that could be an opportunity, sure. Uh, that would be a good form of feedback.
I'd say bring this to a close. I like Alejo's perspective. Let's take it up with the plan on talking about the golf uh, at the uh, park board meeting and uh, maybe move to some other areas. The only thing I would bring up on Alejo's point to the first tee is we don't know how long these negotiations are going to take. Um, I've been involved with, and I'm sure many others have been involved with negotiations that take a year and a half to two years and sometimes longer than that. So, um, yeah, I, that's the only thing that that I would rebut with to Alejo's point. Well, I have heard from folks who have talked to folks at First Tee, they're looking at an end of the year resolution. If they're thinking that, I'm not sure that works, uh, but nonetheless, there is a certain urgency to, I think, getting on the record the point Alejo made uh, just as guidance to the city manager, if nothing else. Are they thinking end of 2020 or end of 2021? 2020. Dale? Oh. Wow. They think, sorry, I, I didn't quite understand that. They they are going to have a formal offer in hand by the end of 2020? That is what I understand they are communicating. They expect it to be a at least a broad brush concept the council would endorse details to be worked out later but a formal commitment to going down that path and that's what i've got i'm involved greg ferris myself members of the other of our group are interested in at least putting a hold on this very consistent with what the point aleo made let's give this some time let's think it through before we jump in um, you had a good year. You might have a better year next year if the uh, weather holds and you retain. The question is, are you going to retain all these new golfers? And that's on the table. That may or may not be the case. The membership plan seems to be attracting some. Better marketing might help that, but it might change. So I think it's it's a really valid point uh, Aleo raises that the time is not good right now, but it's, if it's a good idea, it'll be a good idea next July. Well, I got to tell you, we missed in all windows in regards to uh, doing anything by the end of this year. I would I, think so. <laughs> I don't see that happening whatsoever. Um, and Mr. Goode, you're absolutely right. I think one of the things that we need to work on is holding all of our golfers that have come back to us. And the other part of it, though, is also still working on bringing in new golfers. Um, it's going to be really interesting to analyze this next last year because of COVID. We've actually that silver lining is that we've actually got more golfers coming out to the golf courses. Are those golfers new golfers or are they the golfers that had not come as much as they used to? So, um, but whatever it is, we need our, our actions and what's the responsibility of the golf staff is to make sure that we retain those golfers and keep those numbers high. Uh, whether we end up going a different direction or not. Um, what the direction that I'm giving Mr. Hendricks is we need to keep working as if we're going to be operating these golf courses, not just next year, but for the next 10 years. Um, because like I said, we're, we're nowhere close to finding a, a, uh, a negotiating deal with First Tee yet. And Eddie, we may we may we may have gotten off topic of your original question about golf, but what do we want to accomplish uh, as a park board and as it pertains to golf? Um, is 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 the retention of eighty percent of the of the golfers is that something that we want to look at addressing? Is better engagement of the golf advisory committee? You know what I mean? I, I guess I, I want to make sure that as a park board that we have some direction on what we want to get done. That's true. Well, I think, you know, initially the golf advisory committee and the park board, and I hope I don't speak out of turn here. We, we just want to be heard. We want to make sure that, um, you know, our voices count. Um, so I, I would say that's number one. I don't know if we can put a um, residual number per se on the retention of new golfers that we got this year. Um, I, I guess that's a that, that's a question for one of the Troys, if if that's even feasible to tell if you know that this is the first time that they played in ten years or ever. Um, you know, how can we make sure that 
we are bringing these guys back. Is that something that we can track, Troy or Troy? I'll defer to Mr. Hendricks. I'll have to look into uh, our point of sale system, and I think we can run a report that will give us a list of how many new people have joined our tea time system compared to what we had previous to a certain time period. Um, I mean, it kind of goes to the question that they always ask a couple of times is how much cart revenue are we bringing in by each member? And as I've said at the golf committee meetings that if Eddie, if you're a season uh, a member and you come in, you pay check in and you go out to practice green and <clears throat> you're playing with Ty and with Alejo and Dale and you had planned on walking and they all show up and are riding and you decide, well, I'm going to go ahead and ride because I can't keep up with three of them on carts. And then you turn around and come in and pay for a cart fee. Unless that's rung up under your name again, it doesn't tie that green speed, that cart fee to you. Uh, if they just bring it up as a cash cart, uh, then we can't track 100% of how much every member has spent. And we don't do that in the concession side either on the, on the food and beverage side. So uh, if people that we got a lot of people that are playing that come in and I'm playing with this group and they just get rung up under the captain of the group's name and they pay a greens fee. So I don't get up. We don't capture 100% of the names. Uh, we've tried to get the guys to do it, and they have said it's just too difficult to get uh, their seasonal staff on board to do that. So, But I can see what I can do about running a report of new people that have gone into the system in 20, 2020. I can look at it for the whole year, and I can look and see what it has been since we got back to what's now new normal in July. I can look into that. Okay. Well, I, I asked yeah, yesterday... Yeah. That I'm sorry. I asked yesterday at Tex how many rounds I had played this year. They looked it up. They showed 188 transactions. And he said that includes both signing in to play. I have a membership, obviously. And if I rent a cart, that's a separate transaction. So that data seems to be there. I don't think, honestly, why it's a big deal. You keep track of everybody's name when they sign in. Um, it should be fairly easy to track repeat players and Obviously, the well, growth opportunity, the growth that, opportunity that's seems what to be I was getting bring memory. Up. There might be a few instances of, of you know missed here and there, um, but overall, I think we're probably capturing ninety to ninety-five percent of that overall data. So, um, might be interesting to take a look at moving forward for sure. Okay, anything else on golf? Did that answer your question, Alejo? A little bit, yeah. I guess I just want to make sure, too, that, I mean, I don't know. I'd like to ask both Troys as well, like, how can we be an asset to you guys? I mean, Troy, I don't want right. you to have to deal with us. I want you to enjoy working with us. And I, I'm sure you do. I know I can be a pain in the ass, but uh, sorry, I don't know if I could say that on camera. We'll bleep it out. But... <laughs> But I want to make sure that, you know, as a park board and that we can communicate this with the Golf Advisory Committee as well, that, you know, how can we be assets to you guys and make your job easier? Well, the things that you guys are doing, I really appreciate. I think, uh, yeah, I understand your frustration, especially what Mr. Gooder is talking about. Um, I, I share the interest of, of and, and the goals of what the park board is after. I share that with the city manager. Uh, I think the extra step that the group took to inform all of the council members about the furlough situation was hugely impactful. I really appreciated that because obviously I want to take care of our staff. We're looking at making sure that they, uh, especially during COVID times and, and during Christmas time, that the, you know they get good paychecks. So I really appreciate the interest um, and the thing that we're trying to do for parks and recreation, not just for golf, but it's having a stronger impact on the community, uh, being recognized by the community that we are providing great services, um, uh, just a whole lot more exposure. And the more exposure we get, the more effective we can be um, providing our services, uh, which in turn 
gives us more funding, gives us more flexibility. Uh, and because of what we've done in the past, I think we've been really successful with our capital improvement projects and increasing all of our programming. Our programming has uh, increased a whole lot. So it's, it's your continued uh, interest in advocating for not just golf, but for all of the things that we do in parks and recreation. So um, I, I don't take it as a pain in the ass, and I think we can say that word. Um, but I, I understand it as passion and, and an interest for you guys to help us be successful. So um, I try to channel all that information right up the, right up the chain of command. Eddie, I had two more financial points to raise, if you'd indulge me. One is the Auburn Hills debt. Cindy Claycomb yesterday asked whether we had made a debt service payment, and the answer was no, obviously we haven't. Um, that's to me, is an embarrassment. The, there is a lot for sale next to the ninth tee box at Auburn Hills. The lot next to it has probably a $3 million house going up, a four-car garage, that lot is for sale for $350,000. The property tax that has been taken in by Auburn Hills has eclipsed that $5 million debt. I know we've talked about this before and we made recommendations. Again, those never go anywhere. That needs to be addressed. The city of Newton is paying for its golf course with the property tax evaluations from the adjoining uh, housing area. That's just common practice. Somehow we've lost our way on that. The second point is the administrative fees, the 243,000 central administrative fees taken out of golf revenue that aren't line item. They simply go to the department to pay the salaries of people like Mr. Hauptman, Mr. Hen uh, uh, Mr. Layton. $47,000 of golf money went to pay the city manager's salary this year, but he didn't share in the furloughs. $100,000 went to pay the salaries of people in finance, the treasury, and general accounting. They didn't share in the furloughs. 40000 went to human resources to pay their salaries. They didn't share in the furloughs. And by comparison, there are 21 employees in the golf division. Human resources charges us $41,000 to oversee them. Transit has 150 employees and pays 11000 so what I'd like to think is that the park board, this is the kind of issue we'd sit down with, perhaps even in a council workshop and say, this is not right. It is so out of whack. The city of Lincoln collects a hundred grand in administration fees. You need something. You should have some money to offset some of those costs. But this is, in addition, the computer at each, each golf course is charged $3,000 a year. It's the same computer for eight years. You get like $24,000 invested in one in Auburn Hills and uh, now there's some network costs associated with that, but it is totally out of whack. Would the park board be comfortable taking on an issue like that? It is a charge to the public, to the park board on its website that it is supposed to weigh in on budget issues. To me, this is the most egregious fault in our golf division. Your hand, and I don't end the Troy or Troy dealing with a budget where they siphoned off a quarter million dollars a year. It isn't for anything for golf. It just goes to pay the salaries of city department heads or uh, members. That's wrong. And we just, I would hope that the park board might find a way that we in our process put that on the table and fix it. If we don't, it'll be done in a public forum otherwise. And we're not, I think it's, people are going to be asking, why wouldn't we do that? So. Good points. Another thing I would say on this, I mean, golf has uh, trended upward, um, believe it or not, nationally this year. Um, mm -hmm. And I think over the past couple of years, in large part to um, these top golfs um, opening around the nation and, and worldwide. Um, I think I saw a study that said 51% of their captured golfers or users, whatever you want to call them, uh, classify themselves as non golfers. Um, and there is a significant amount of them. I can't remember the exact number. Um, a significant amount of them uh, responded with that they will take up golf at some point in the next year. So if Wichita ever gets a top golf or a top golf concept, 
I hope that we would be open to partnering with them um, in, a, in some form or fashion, um, whether it be marketing or, or whatever it may be. I hope that we're in conversations with, with those guys, and that's all I'll say on that. Well, as a follow up to that, Newton Sand Creek met its revenue goals the first week of October. They met their annual revenue goal the first week of October. So it, it, that wasn't a product of necessarily of top golf. They're just such a demand for golf. Uh, there is a great opportunity to, to feed on that, and I hope that's where our marketing gets directed towards. But here's a good point that I think Top Golf has broadened, but that's a fairly expensive entry point. Um, First Tee, to its credit, is a wonderful program for getting young people to play golf. Junior, the Junior Wichita Junior Golf Foundation, similarly, um, the high school programs. Those are points of emphasis that really need to be looked at. Okay. Anything else on golf? Let's. Well, let's move on to item number two, the long-term planning CIP projects. And I will turn it over to Troy. So I think I shared a lot of this information in several meetings. We, in the past five years, have been very successful on a lot of our CIP programs. An example this year in regards to your tennis uh, with supplemental funding from USTA as well as Mo Conley. Uh, those two organizations put in close to $500,000 on a $1.5 million project. So um, every year we go through a process of evaluating projects. We go through looking at priorities, addressing safety concerns, uh, and then we put that into a package for staff review and then eventually goes to council. Um, because of COVID, uh, a lot of the projects that we wanted to do in 2021 have actually been, I guess, uh, pushed back by four or five years. Uh, the big things that we want to do is finish what we did in 21, which a big one of that is the Aquatics Master Plan. We have a couple other shelters that we're working on as well. So the, the idea is we want to make sure that we continue improving the inner parts of the city that goes along with our um, parks master plan of improving what we have already addressing um, and, and making sure that we address some of the uh, maintenance defaults that we have out there so we can we'll continue putting that together now whether we get that funding or not that's another question but we will always put out the request for those not just for um, our swimming pools and parks but also our recreation centers as well so that's kind of the philosophy of what we have in regards to CIP projects okay any questions or comments on the CIP projects Troy, where can we get a can we get a list of those or um, like a timeline of, of what to expect and when to expect it? So on the web page, there's a listing of all of the CIP projects and I'll make sure that you guys have access to that as well. And we are also going to be putting in updates. Um, we have been working with engineering and engineering is our project management of all of our projects. But since they're inundated with so many projects and primarily they're focused on the road construction, uh, some of the other major infrastructure. Um, we're going to be putting up our own updates, and that's something that we will be putting up at the beginning of the year uh, with our team. So we'll have something on our website, on the park website, that will have a listing of all of our CIP projects and where they're at, what the funding is, what the background is, and updates on a regular basis. But we won't be able to kick that in until uh, the new year, but there is a listing in the finance page in regards to every single CIP project that we have, uh, whether it's parks, library, uh, engineering, public works, um, and we'll tell you a little bit of details about it as well. So I'll make sure you guys get uh, access to that. Oh, yeah, it's pretty easy. I just pulled it up. Okay. Wait. Thank you. Thank you, Troy. Mm -hmm. You're on mute, Hoyt. Hoyt, you're on mute. 
Still on mute. Um, I have a question. If, if wait, are yeah. you able to ask your question? No. <laughs> okay. Um, Troy, you mentioned um, a parks master plan. So, CIP projects tie into this larger master plan is that kind of the framework that informs priorities within the CIP? Yes, we have what's called a pros plan, a parks and recreation open space master plan, which was created. I think it was 2012. We updated it in 2016 and we're planning on updating it in 2021. Um, and, and we work in concert with the planning department. Um, as well as some other departments and agencies so to make sure that we have a con consolidated but also a um, a good partnership in regards to what the vision looks like for the future for not just parks but how we integrate with all the other groups and entities and and stakeholders within the city is that master plan also on the website it is and okay. and we I think we've passed it out uh, in the past to a lot of the park board members. Uh, Troy, I have a question in concert with the CIP. Is there a mechanism to use the foundation and private donations to work hand in hand? The reason I asked that, I get asked a lot at the dog park, why can't we get more benches? People say, why can't I give money? I want to give money and buy a bench. And we seem to lack the communication uh, Having been to the Hutchinson Dog Park, which is the Shangri-La of dog parks next to the prison, it's got lush green grass, waterfalls, and a whole <laughs> wall full of names of people who gave money. We seem to lack that. Uh, I think the one at uh, the animal shelter here is some private donations. Mm -hmm. But there are folks who want to give money and are a little frustrated. How does, anyway, how does that, do we have a process that might be improved to encourage uh, private contributions to make some of these meet some of these goals. Well, let me go. Let me go over a couple things really quick. And one of the things I really want to make sure that you guys understand is that we want to separate and make sure that we separate the private donations and fundraising activities that we have. And that's not. It, it's going to be leveraged and incorporated with CIP dollars, but not in place of. And when I first got here, one of the things that was expected was this fundraising to actually um, uh, the difference of, of some of the lost dollars in CIP dollars and operational dollars. Uh, so we don't want to use those dollars in place of operational dollars or, or capital dollars. We want to use them in leverage. So I keep them very, very separate. Our number one tool for that is the Park Foundation. Uh, the Park Foundation uh, their whole goal is to fundraise for the parks, so whether it's been for the, um, um, oh, what, what's it called, uh, the Great Plains, I'm not the Great Plains, the, uh, the Nature Center that we have over here at Riverside. Uh, we've also done it for the, um, what was the name of that project, the... Uh, Pressure Baby Camp. Thank you. That's the one. <laughs> and, and there's probably five or six other ones. Um, and now they're also getting money in regards to park, plates for parks that can leverage other dollars as well. So if there's a group that wants to fundraise, uh, there's already a 501c3 organization, the Park Foundation, that they can work with to help them with the banking, with the fundraising, uh, with the management of the funds. And so when there's enough dollars already raised, we can put that towards whatever project that they're interested in. Thank you. Uh, I think I got my sound back. Can you guys yeah. hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. OK, hey, uh, while we're discussing long term uh, agreements, uh, where are we at with baseball? You're talking about the wind surge? Yes. So that's not in my realm, but I'll tell you what I do know. 
is that they're going to be playing, and more than likely, it sounds like they're going to be playing in double A. Uh, there's pros and cons with that uh, level of baseball, different ways, but uh, I think the uh, instead of the, the Florida Marlins, we're going to be associated with the Minnesota Twins. Um, and, and this happens in minor league where the uh, different cities that host these teams, their affiliations change every once in a while. So that's my understanding of what's going to be happening. Thank you. That one of the differences about AAA and AA, uh, AA plays 20 less games. Um, they're a little bit more regional. So I think we're going to be in the Texas League, which would be uh, Texas and Arkansas and Kansas. So it would be a little bit different than the whole Pacific Coast where we had teams all the way up in um, uh, California, Las Vegas. Uh, and, and so it becomes a little bit more regionalized. Are there budget obligations for that ballpark that are still outstanding that the city has to meet that might be in competition with parks and rec dollars? So my understanding is is no. Uh, the only thing that we had obligations with uh, as far as parks is, is maybe some maintenance, but I think we're able to work that out. Uh, as far as landscape maintenance. Going back to capital dollars, we did have $9 million that was set aside for um, Crystal Prairie Lake, which was, which was used for the baseball stadium. And that is one of my capital projects that I keep asking for, and I will continue to keep asking for, um, as the mining there is, is almost done. I think they're gonna be done in about a year or two. So we'll be ready for Crystal Perry Lake to start becoming developed, but I don't have any capital dollars for that because we lost it to the to the ball field. Um, now, hopefully, I can get that back, and I'll keep asking for it back. Is that similar to Clap? I know the long-term plan for Clap. You at one point identified as much as ten million dollars might be spent. Has that been usurped by the ballpark money as well? We never had any dollars uh, budgeted for that or line item for that. Uh, of course, I want to have a, an outstanding park and I want to spend uh, dollars wisely, but also impactfully as well. And so, yes, my my dream was $10 million. Uh, the reality is I'll get what I get and we'll see what that is as I keep asking for that. So as of now, um, I don't have any dollars for CLAP and I'll continue asking for that as well. So what is the short-term, long-term plan for CLAP? Just the vacant area where people hang out or? So what we've done, we've done some things already out there to improve it into a park. Uh, we'll continue to, to add little things here and there. Um, master plan is almost completed. And I think we shared some things with you guys in regards to the master plan. Uh, we hope yeah. to get the master plan back to you all by, oh, hopefully February or March, and actually get the, the master plan approved by council later on in spring. So once we get the master plan, that'll give us a better idea of what the dollars are needed for that. Uh, once we get the master plan done, that will hopefully energize council and, and the, the residents of that area to say, hey, we really need those dollars in the CIP for this project. Um, and then I'll also be looking for grants, other type of funding, donations, sponsorships to meet that goal of whatever that funding is. Okay, CLAP was closed because it was a financial drain on the system. I think some of us would like to see going forward a line item specific cost accounting of whatever we're spending on CLAP going forward starting as it closed. I know these things you're doing aren't free and there's no revenue at all. So whatever you do is a negative. Uh, but it would be nice to know, um, did you, would we really offset a loss by closing CLAP or are we just spending more money that we don't have? Uh, I, that, uh, down the road, we're going to be asking that question repeatedly as for an accounting of what is the ongoing cost of maintaining CLAP. And as you do anything to improve it, what are those costs and are those general fund dollars 
or revenue dollars. Uh, that's the offset to justifying the decision to close it in the first place. So we definitely are absorbing the maintenance costs and as part of the whole overall park budget. Um, we can definitely find out what those numbers are. Uh, I think most of that is mowing and we can probably look at what that mowing contract is and get that information to you. Uh, Troy, this is Hoyt. Uh, regarding uh, CLAP and all of the parks in general, I know we keep adding to them and I think that's wonderful, but um, I know that uh, CLAP had some uh, pine trees that were dying and uh, I, I know that the overall city budget, uh, particularly for replacing trees and things like that, has been cut considerably. I would hope that in uh, 2021 we would have a goal of uh, planting more trees uh, in the coming year than we did last year. So it's always our hope to plant more trees and as we're looking at opportunities to save money, that was one of the things that we used this year for savings. And we decided to use that instead of uh, furloughing or uh, laying off staff. Um, so we will continue to look at that and see how we can make sure that we continue planting trees, but also uh, make sure it's a balanced approach. Thank you. So one of the questions that, that I have, as long as we're talking about forestry, is, um, you know, we get the um, recreation reports from Reggie every month, which are great. Um, but of course, parks is more than uh, golf and, and what's discussed through the recreation report. Um, is there a chance to just have some information shared about forestry and I know, you know, because of the challenges with the COVID related budget, um, there were a lot of cuts and it's mowing and tree trimming and all of those things. Um, but it just seems like it'd be important for us to kind of monitor that um, in light of those changes that have been made to the budget. Most definitely. I, I think I shared with you guys that we uh, didn't move forward with a tree planting contract and, and tree purchases as well as tree maintenance and, and pruning contracts. Uh, that, that was the majority of our savings. Uh, we wouldn't have to furlough or lay off staff. Uh, if you want, I, I, and then we provide those numbers to you when we were talking about budget last spring. I think that was back in April. Um, and uh, yeah, because I shared with you guys what our savings requirements were, and I think I put that together, but I can definitely have forestry provide a presentation to you guys, uh, a little bit more drilled down as to what they do every day, what and how does that budget impact them. The majority of it is vacancies that we did not fill, um, and, and those contracts were, were a huge impact. And so what I'll do is for probably not next week, but in January, ask our forestry staff to do a presentation. If I could follow that up, Ty, you made a great point at an earlier meeting about asking for some uh, financial numbers with regard to those recreational activities. And Reggie must be the worst nightmare for everybody in that department because his reports are so comprehensive and so well presented. I wish that, that others would follow suit there. Uh, but at, going forward, I'd like that idea that not just um, forestry, I have an interest in the dog parks. So there are a lot, I know there's an ongoing uh, plan to add them. It'd be nice to have regular updates as well in that same comprehensive fashion that Reggie uses. Either that or cut back Reggie. He's, he's, he's doing too good a job for the most part. But uh, that, that is a good point, Ty. I think that's there's, there seems to be a kind of an odd balance of the emphasis we have at the meetings based on the initiative of the individual making the report. Uh, forestry, I agree with you. I'm, I'm a big fan of the forestry department. They have done wonders at our Meridian Dog Park area planting trees using, I think they just use shoots from existing trees and it doesn't even cost anything. It's been really good, but the same with the dog parks. And I'm not sure what else the parks really gets into that we don't know about. So I echo that sentiment, Ty. We had done a really extensive presentation on dog parks and 
we presented that about a year ago, and we can definitely present that again if that's an interest for dog parks. I think every month just having a little update what what problems are incurred, what uh, challenges there are, and how you want the public to help you out. Uh, visibility is everything. All right. Anything else on long term planning? If not, let's go to item number three, director's 2020 overview. It's a horrible year. <laughs> um, I don't know where to start. Uh, it changed back and forth and, and, and the big issue with COVID just really kind of dominated everything that we did. Uh, where we had to do rapid closings and furloughing of, of staff, uh, canceling of major programs and activities and special events. Uh, but I really give my staff a lot of credit in regards to being resilient and coming up with creative ways to continue our programming. And the other part of that too was continue our, our maintenance of our parks. Uh, parks were extensively used uh, and I've heard this firsthand from several members of the park board. Several of you guys have talked about spending more time in the parks during COVID. And we know this because we're getting a lot more trash, we're getting a lot more traffic, and we were able to continue still maintaining, uh, but we are slipping. A lot of things are starting to fall through the cracks in regards to the fine tune standards of our park main, um, which is a challenge and that's something that we're gonna have to be addressing next year. And I keep sharing this with our budget office and with the city manager, but it might end up being that we will be reducing our standards just to meet our budget obligations. The other part of 2020 uh, was actually reopening and getting things back to normal in regards to the, the constraints that we had. So we came up with innovative ways to make sure everybody was safe and doing proper protocol which required a whole lot more training and communication. Uh, the other silver lining is that communication. We have spent a lot more time working with our staff, communicating, sharing thoughts and ideas, and implementing different uh, ideas and suggestions to make sure that we're safe. Um, and the rest of 2020, like I mentioned at the beginning, we have been very fortunate with our CIP projects and that has really dominated a lot of our work as well so that's kept us busy uh, the aquatics master plan the tennis center just to name a few we have several other cip projects that have really kept us busy um the other part of it is 2020 was planning for 2021 making changes in a lot of our programming so reggie spent a lot of time with his rec staff one big change is going to be how we manage our football program uh, we're going to be changing how we manage our college programs as well. So those are things that we've been planning and we'll be implementing in 2021. Um, so even though we've changed directions, I think we've made good with the time that we've had and, um, and, and becoming more efficient with how we plan and how we execute for the future. And that's what 2021 is going to really be all about. And I'm excited about 2021 because once we get past COVID and everybody gets their vaccinations, uh, I think our programming is going to double again um, from what it has been six years ago. So we'll, we'll see a lot more presence from Parks and Recreation in 2021 than, than it's ever been uh, any time in the past. Troy, is there anything that we can do as a board to help um you know first off on the the challenges that you guys face and then also promoting that new programming and existing programming whether it be via you know facebook or um, other social media outlets um you know or out in the community even so social media that's a really important one i want to talk about in a minute but i think the number one thing is we don't want to slip in our standards. We don't want to slip in regards to our offerings. Um, we want to make sure that our infrastructure continues to be maintained. So the advocating, and, and this is kind of a, a bigger picture, but a microcosm of what we've been talking about golf. In golf, we want to 
advocate for golf to make sure that it is getting all the resources it possibly can get. And the things that Mr. Gooder is talking about, believe me, staff has talked about that and so we're blue in the face and we've been really wanting to get those resources, not just for golf, but for the whole Parks and Recreation Department. So advocating to make sure that we have the resources to continue to operate at a really high level. And that's the goal. Uh, the reality is we're operating at a mediocre level. And my fear is that we're going to operate at a below mediocre level with, with the budgets that we're going to be looking at in the future. So we, the great thing about COVID is that we've really seen that parks and recreation is essential. Um, the, the couple, I don't know, I'd say it was about four weeks that we had park staff that was furloughed. Uh, it, it was really apparent that how important that they really are. What a difference that they really make in the community. And so they, they are essential. And, and same thing with our rec staff. Um, so I don't think as an organization we're going to make that mistake again. Um, what I really think that is important for the park board to do is advocate, find ways to let their council members know and other leaders in the community how important parks and recreation is. Eddie? Well, Troy, we lost you there for the last 10 seconds or so. So if, we can, if we can rewind about 10 seconds on your last thought, I'm sure it was the best thing you could say. He's gone. You're muted. You're muted, Troy. There we go. I don't know why it muted by itself. I guess I was talking too long. Um, <laughs> I think the most important thing that is just really that the park board advocates and that we, uh, I, I got it fixed. Thanks. Um, that we, make sure that the whole community understands what our purpose is and the things that we impact. Um, it, it's just unbelievable if you really drill down how many things that we really do in this community. So that's that's what I really would like to see happen. Yeah. Eddie, if I could follow up on that. One thing that's a concern to me is the park board doesn't have much of an identity in itself. Your question about what can we do to help Troy, that's great. But as leaders of the community, totally deferring to staff for everything kind of begs the question. Are there minds on this park board that think out of the box? Or do we just always do what staff brings to the table? Staff sets the agenda. I've not heard out of this body in the year I've been on kind of an independent perspective. I know these are all bright minds, but if you don't force that, one aspect might be subcommittees that address some of these where people actually look at the budget, get into the details, and do participate. If we're going to be leaders here, we just cannot be constantly echoing what staff says. That's been the case with the GAC for the last several years, and it's different now, I think. Eddie, thanks uh, for your participation in it. But does the park board want to be something more than just a echo of the staff? And how does that happen? If everybody is just fine the way it is now, that's the way it is. I don't think it's sufficient. I think it underserves our constituents and it underserves the public. Uh, if we're gonna be bigger and better, we just cannot simply be reflecting a staff perspective. <coughs> I think in Oklahoma City, uh, there's uh, some people that really stepped up and actually uh, promoted it to the extent they were able to add about a half a cent sales tax on just for parks. Uh, maybe what we need to do is to really advocate strongly for something like that. Well, and Eddie, this might be something that I feel like Dale's probably leading us into the next point of reviewing the 2020 goals and specifically diving into 2021 and really identifying what we want to do as an organization or as a, as a committee, as a park board. Because, um, I mean, although advocating is very important, I think that that's essential. I think 
I mean, I think Dale has a point that we got to we got to figure out what it is that we're going to own and how we're going to help improve our park systems. I, I also think that uh, I mean, one thing for consideration um, that we could advocate on is kind of re-energizing the effort related to the um, the riverfront legacy master yeah. plan. I mean, you know, the reality is that we might be in a downturn right now, but it's a great time to plan for uh, for the future, especially as the convention industry might be changing. You know, maybe the the master plan uh, might need to be tweaked to to reflect some of the changes that are being um, considered in the you know the convention industry going forward. And that'd be a, that'd be a great subcommittee that nobody would be more qualified to lead than you, Ty. And that'd be that'd be a great thing to pursue. It's hard to do it with everybody, but if you start with the folks who care the most, I care about golf, obviously. You're an expert in the downtown. Uh, what your role that unfortunately came to an untimely end, but uh, you're certainly an expert in that. That expertise is where leadership comes from, but it's got to be reflected in the action of the board. Then, so I think that's a great thought. And it's certainly something to put on, but how you get to it, how do you get it? And I've seen that riverfront thing on the agenda for the last eight months. I don't even know what it is. I mean, I barely understand any part of it uh, because it's never really in that fashion. Um, so it's, I think it's a great idea, Ty. That's a I think it would be a good initiative to kind of re-energize, if you will, because um, it seems like it's lost steam a little bit, at least in the public eye. Um, I'm sure they're working hard as nails uh, behind the scenes, but um, to kind of push that out there with our platform, I think uh, would do wonders. So uh, you know, I, I talked to Jason a couple weeks ago, well, probably a month ago now, and he had mentioned that they are reviewing, um, you know, certain coming out of COVID basically. Um, in, in terms of performing arts and, and conventions and everything. So they are still in talks with the architect on that, the master planners. Um, so conversations are still being had. They're just being done behind closed doors. Um, so I can share that, um, but I'm not sure what those discussions are and what it looks like now. So I think, you know, using our platform uh, to kind of re-energize the public on this would be um, a great use of effort. Okay. So, uh, just as a follow and in, in same sentiment that Ty expressed, I've got a big concern about the budget process. In my time on this board, I mean, the, our, our website says that our charge is to um, participate and oversee the budget process, and that hasn't been the case. I'd like to think perhaps, Eddie, in the future going to the next year that a budget subcommittee that looks at that as an ongoing basis uh there are th decisions made we have no idea they took place um, and that's that's where a board function as opposed to a staff function is different so i'd like to think that might come to the table going forward similar to what ty said about riverfront those are separate issues that would benefit from maybe a little more focused attention with a subcommittee sure i think one thing that we could start with too is a better understanding of you know timelines and when when certain functions are supposed to happen right because although for like corporate entities and things of that nature you know you end up you finish your budgeting at the end of the year for the following year right i mean for the city we're looking at budgets a lot earlier than most people are and so you know dale oftentimes when we're looking at budgets i mean we're we're just we're late to the game and so you know, maybe we need to map out what what the year looks like and what milestones we need to be aware of so that we can properly affect change in those respective areas. Yeah. Anything else on the director's review? One thing I will say, I want to commend the, the entire staff. Uh, this year has been exceptionally challenging, and um, you know I've heard nothing but, but good things from the community. You guys have busted your butts and did a tremendous job all year. Um, you know, with with changes, uh, seems like we get you know 
something changes every hour it seems like and and you guys watches very well and i just want to commend um troy you and your staff Thank you. so thank you yeah let's move right on to item number four review of 2020 goals I've been on the park board since January and I didn't know we had any goals. <laughs> I've, never, I've never seen them. So. Did you actually have some goals? Troy, did you have anything on that, Troy? So you know, I'm, I'm scratching my head thinking in, in past meetings, we had put together some goals that was directed from the park board and what the park board want to accomplish. What are the goals that they want to see happen for the future? And, and um, some of them have actually been obtained and some of them kind of have slipped through the cracks. And I think for this year, we really didn't focus on anything uh, in regards to that. So maybe this is a great opportunity to renew that and put new vision and focus for uh, the park board to come up with some Maybe it's not necessarily you spend too much time on 2020 goals, but look at the future on 2021 goals. What is it that you guys want to accomplish as a park board? Sure. Let's go ahead and uh, segue into 2021 goals then. Item number five, since our only goal in 2020 is to survive it. So let's move on to item number five. We've, we've kind of got a baseline so far with um, kind of re-energizing re the Riverfront Legacy Master Plan along with setting up a budget subcommittee to look at, um, you know, the budget dynamically throughout the year. Um, what are some other, and, and this is a good time just to kind of bounce ideas off of one and use, use this as a sounding board, if you will, um, to, to kind of, you know, come up with um, what you guys want to see um, next year and into the future. I'd love to hear from Tori. Yeah, I just want to commend Tori on using the virtual mask for this meeting. I haven't seen the lower part of her face throughout. So that's, that's, that's quite a contribution to the mask thing. But. <laughs> no, I just thought she's been listening to us rant this whole time. So I want to hear what she has to say. No, I've actually had a ton of technical problems. Um, and now I'm getting low battery notification, of course. <laughs> All right, let me grab a charger and then I'll be back. I'm at 5%, sorry. <laughs> okay, any ideas for 2021 goals? Something that, that comes to the top of mind? The budget thing, something I'm concerned about, Eddie, I'd like to say as a goal that the park board in a timely fashion follows the budget process and weighs in on the budget priorities before it goes to a public hearing. Last year I asked about this. Mr. Hoffman informed me that, that he wasn't involved in it at that point. Finance drove the bus apparently and that's not going to work. That's just not acceptable. Uh, so it's something that uh, working with finance that there's timely and relevant information that comes to the park board just to sign off on that there are decisions being made with resources and that as a matter of process we just have a chance to look at that. So as a goal I'd suggest that. Uh, I would like to know, for instance, and this is Hoyt, I'd like to know, for instance, uh, how we're going to uh, maybe constrain ourselves in the first half of uh, 21 uh, so that we can full, uh, have full participation in the second half uh, with open streets, with uh, maybe a late river fest or uh, some of the 150th celebrations that we didn't have this last year or uh, other uh, things that we really ought to be doing to uh, draw attention to the parks. Okay. <clears throat> One thing that I would bring up is, um, you know, I think we, 
we have a really cool legacy type project down at clap right now um, i want to make sure that we finalize that properly um, the master plan that is and then get significantly um, you know along the way in terms of um, cip discussions and fundraising thank um, you i think that's a that's a project that um, you know kind of needs us to to push it along and advocate for it going back to I like that word, Troy. I'm going to use it. Uh, we need to advocate for it consistently. Um, otherwise, I'm I'm afraid it's it's just going to be pushed down the line like uh, the aquatics master plan was a little bit, which we all know how long that took. Um, so if we continue to advocate it for it, um, you know, I I like our chances. So I I would like to. to Thank you very much. There. So I'd like to just put out there, I, I know that, uh, you know, this is kind of a hard goal sometimes to manage, but I think with some of the higher profile projects like Nasker Park, um, there were a couple of times when park board members would read about things in the newspaper. And, you know, I know the city, you know, and some of these things, uh, negotiations happen at a pretty high level. And it might not be appropriate for us to always be involved in those discussions. Um, but I do know there were a few times when we had to read about some things that, you know, we thought we should have been privy to prior to um, reading about them in the newspaper. So if we could just have that as kind of an overarching goal um, to avoid that happening next year, that would be something that I think would make um, all of the park board members happy. Okay. <clears throat> Tori, did you get plugged in? I am plugged in. Good. I got the AirPods swapped out. One was dying and been trading them off. Today is not my technology day. <laughs> <laughs> did you have any goals that, you know, come to the top of, of mind for you that are important that you want to get out here uh, for 2021 and, and years to come? You know, I'm glad the communication thing was mentioned. Um, that has been kind of an issue over the last couple of years, really. And I, I don't know if what the solution is there. If there's like a, you know, an email we can get sent with some updates. You know, it doesn't need to be anything complex or as detailed as like the golf course updates or anything like that. But um, I do find out a lot of things either via newspaper or other people asking me about it because they know I'm on the park board and it's kind of the first time hearing of it or um, you know updates that I haven't heard yet so I think that would be a big help and then also you know what we can be taking back to council members and and you know sometimes things seem to be a bigger issue like aquatics plant whatever and then it gets dropped and something else gets pulled up. You know, how can we be uh, best utilized as park board members and also serving our council member and our district at the same time? How can we help connect all of those dots? Uh, Eddie, as far as a formal goal, I'd like to see us address golf and identify what that the goal to me is that we end up with a affordable, sustainable, quality public golf system that puts public interest first in its preservation, and that 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 we meet that goal. Uh, we just don't opt out to something more convenient that's not in the public interest. So maybe the goal is just to make sure that we're involved. That's been the missing thing. Uh, like Tori's point about communication is right on. The, the, the reading about something in the paper that you should have known about from the beginning, that's on us. You can blame staff for not doing it, but if you don't demand it, it ain't gonna happen. So fixing that in that big picture is part of fixing golf, fixing riverfront, fixing all of it, that we have the opportunity to participate. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, the, you're, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say the uh, I found that the city manager does put out uh, uh, 
regular reports on a lot of activities in various departments. Uh, I, I sometimes I get a copy and sometimes I don't. There doesn't seem to be a a, a regular process. Um, so uh, maybe if, if Penny were to capture those and send them out to us on a regular basis, everyone would benefit. Oh, I have. Oh, yeah, I, I was just going to say, you know, I think that from from my perspective, I'd love for us to really take ownership and be able to put, you know, our name as the park board on one or two projects next year, right? Whether that's the execution of, to your point, CLAP, or to Ty's point, carrying forward, you know, helping to reignite the conversations around the Riverfront Legacy Master Plan. I mean, the centerpiece of that plan is a big ass park in the middle of downtown. So, sorry, a big old park in the middle of downtown. Um, but, you know, I'd really love for us to, for one, is to, to take ownership and be able to put our name on something. But then the other thing too is, um, you know, really have focused um, or an in, in, intentional meetings. Um, what I mean by that is, you know, I know there's things that we need to approve and say yes and no to or make recommendations on. Um, but I feel that oftentimes, sorry, there's a squirrel. Uh, I feel like oftentimes uh, we get into conversations around you know, what could have been or what should have happened instead of what are we going to do? Uh, and it's really easy for us to just, yeah, I think from our perspective as a board, I would love for us to be the board that comes up with solutions to challenges and not necessarily right. the board that just, I don't know, talks about what could have been. Yeah. Points out the problems without having an active right. conversation on solutions. Right, right. right. Yeah. If we have a problem, there's a problem in place, then we, we ought to, we ought to bring solutions to those to those challenges. 100% agree. To your first point, um, Troy, is it or is it even feasible for us to uh, take on one or two projects next year in terms of the budget, or are we going to have to get creative in terms of funding on that? So I'm not sure I understand your question, but what I'm going to comment in, in regards to Definitely, we can pick two or three projects that need funding and um, get the park board involved with that and making sure that there's good communications through the other city departments, primarily finance and the city manager's office. Um, I think those folks, primarily the city manager, if, if there's any impact, it's making sure that your voice is heard to the city manager. Um, and so I think that's going to have to come with regular dialogue. It's not necessarily just a situation where you guys make a motion and I pass that up. Um, and what I'll do, uh, Mr. Goder's point is I'll ask for written response so I can make sure that I get this written response back to the park board. But I think whether it's going to a council meeting and, and speaking on behalf of a certain project or um, making sure that, that your council member is, is knowledgeable and involved in some of these projects. You know, a good example is the CLAP, is, um, especially with uh, the difficult situation we have in that district right now. Um, the leadership is going to be kind of floundering a little bit, so we need to find out uh, what ways we can do that to strengthen that interest and, and making sure that that community feels like they're being represented. Thank you. Eddie, would it be useful to suggest as a goal that we improve the way we engage the public in this process? I had asked a couple of meetings ago about perhaps a Facebook page being started on behalf of the dog parks, just as a way for people to have an access to get in. That didn't go over very well, like that's not possible. I'm gonna work the same angle on the golf issue. We're gonna create a public forum to engage the golf public so they have a way to weigh in. I don't see that um, as a real strong point to the department right now, that there's a way for people just to quickly get online, uh, see an issue, weigh in on an issue, and help us decide what the public's priorities are. 
So on that point, I would say that you personally could start that Facebook page. However, I would caution you with using any city branding. Um, you know, personally, you can start it and have that forum so that we can get feedback um, so the staff can get feedback um, and improve upon, you know, what's being said. Um, you know, I, don't, I'm, I might be stepping out of bounds here, but I'm not sure if we have the resources um, at City Hall to to manage a, a forum like that. Troy, do you have comments? So we typically try to get feedback on different projects as we go through the projects. Um, the thing about CLAP, we must have had 15, 20 community engagement meetings. We did things online. We did surveys. We actually did town hall meetings. Um, so it's mostly focused getting that feedback on certain projects and situations. Um, uh, right now, we're not have anything budgeted for, for any dog parks. And so that's why we're not going that direction. What do we need for a dog park or where do we want our next dog park? We have a master plan, but we don't have anything to execute it with. And so we're not doing anything. Uh, so that's why we're not looking for that feedback. feedback. Yeah, it's getting the end of the day. Feedback right now. Not that we don't want that feedback. It's just that we need it as we're tackling different projects and situations. And, and you're right, it's really difficult for us to manage uh, so many different areas of different interests. There's, uh, you know, we could open it up for this golf and, and basketball and football and, and um, we'd get a whole lot of mixed messages as well as uh, difficulty managing all that. Um, now, it, if any one of you all find ways to get feedback and put it in a, in a situation where we can actually absorb it and use it, then of course we would use it and, and put it to our benefit. Sometimes we benefit from the experience of others. Oklahoma City has had a remarkable success with its MAPS program. And in that, they, sol they solicit from the public. They might have an idea, but they put it before the public for its endorsement. Then they go to a vote. That's how they got their uh, Oklahoma City Thunder basketball court. That's how they're funding education. It has been remarkable. We don't do that. And we should think about how we might emulate that model. It's a, it's a good model. And I think it gets to the points that you're all saying, you want to be a player, you want to get something done, you can't do it yourself. It's the public's will that dictates this. Um, perhaps as a goal, could we look at how we might emulate those communities that are more successful than us? In golf, it's Lincoln and Aurora, Colorado. In, in uh, uh, public projects, it's Oklahoma City. Tulsa's got some great experiences. We kind minds I think to wanting to accept that others might have something good to offer but I I don't think we've so when you bring out maps that's a uh, that's dictated on public vote as you said I think they started that back in 2000 or around the turn of the century and it actually passed on a very narrow um, you know vote um, right past four or six years or whenever they bring up the question again, um, it's actually increased um, its its victory margin, if you will. So yep. people that have bought in um, and that takes time. However, and I've looked at studies and I've looked at Wichita um, and I've talked to you know decision makers, they don't believe and we've seen it in the past, even with, you know, the downtown arena, if you will, people in Wichita will not vote for a tax hike. <clears throat> and, and maybe that's changing and I, I hope it is because I completely agree with you. If we wanna get stuff done like the Oklahoma cities, the Tulsa's, et cetera, we're gonna need implementation. Now, uh, now, wait a minute, Eddie, the arena passed and we have passed bond after issues. After the third time, yeah. And, and we passed bond issues in favor of education. Our public isn't that died in the wool wacko conservatives that won't ever endorse. If you give them a reason to do something and it's valid, I have good expectations that we can uh, win the public's trust on it. They have to be good ideas, obviously, um, but that don't don't denigrate that process in Oklahoma City. That was it was a very slim margin the first year. 
they're on their fourth or fifth incarnation of it now. And you're right, every time it's gotten better because they won the public's trust. Right. That, that arena thing was amazing because it was a tremendous thing. We said we're gonna we're gonna raise the tax, we're gonna pay for it, we're gonna drop the tax. We did it. What a wonderful experience for government to do what it said it's gonna do and then get out of the way. That's good government. Uh, no reason we can't do that in another. We never tried it again. If you identified a project for your riverfront thing or the aquatics thing where it's gonna be funded and then stopped. Um, I'm a big fan of not bonding anything. Save the money. Uh, water, water walk, for example, we changed the formula thanks to Rob Rain and Mark Manning and their genius to pay for that as a pay-as-you-go thing. Save the state of Kansas $10 million because we were innovative in how we approached it. That's the opportunities that are there if we just somehow get them to the table. Yeah, you and I are on the same page, Dale. I, I, I think you're right. I want it to happen. <laughs> just... Call yeah, like, no kidding. Like, so. But what is the idea? I mean, that's the, that's your point. What what would we get behind? Uh, the riverfront thing has got a an image. It's not well defined right now, but it could easily be that kind of thing if you describe it. And if that's what we're going to get behind, that'd be great. Uh, it'd be up to Ty to take the leadership on that and tell us what does it look like. I mean, how does it and process it through? What would you do to fund it? Uh, make it work. Our our old town development is incredible what happened down there taking a super fun site and turning it into a gem of an entertainment district uh, that happened with foresight and leadership and we're kind of missing that part right now we're just kind of foundering for looking for ideas and um, just trying to fix what's broken as opposed to creating something new yeah i agree you start so that Ty, tie, it'll certainly help you. Ty, your goal for next year is to uh, get that riverfront legacy. <laughs> no kidding. Goal. I, I accept the challenge. Don't come back if you don't get it done, okay? <laughs> Ty, I got you. I'll help you too. Excellent. Thank you. So just a, a thought in regards to Oklahoma City, and I, I've spent a lot of time studying maps and, and understanding what it's all about, and the process is so cool that they really spend a, a whole department that just manages all the maps uh, projects and they have a whole team that goes out there and gets community engagement um, everything from the marketing to the messaging the whole shebang uh, it's a whole large team that makes it happen um, it would be nice to have those type of resources and i think that's kind of one of our just, just one of the most difficult things that we have going through is the challenges of not having the resources to even uh, take the next step. Um, the, the vision's great, and you can have all the vision in the world, but if we don't have folks that are willing to step up to expend those resources and put those resources into the right people's hands, it's, it's really tough to get to the next level. Uh, but that's what we want to do, and that's what we continue trying to do. Uh, that as we look at the vision for what we want, uh, just a great city. Troy, question for you. You said you've studied maps. What if if I don't if you I don't know if, I don't know if this is the right time to ask this, but what would you say are like are the top functions of the maps department? You know, if you had a bullet pointed out into four or five functions or whatever it is. So first of all, they develop a need, and they get that need from engagement with the community. Then they put together what those projects could look like, uh, educate everybody on what those projects are. Then they actually go out to vote on it. Uh, the community votes on so they know exactly where their dollars are going. They, they're voting for this particular project, not necessarily a million dollars or $100 million worth of capital projects, but this particular project, and it's down to the penny. Once it gets passed, or if it doesn't get passed, then it, then it goes away. But if it does get passed, then they have a whole team of project managers that executes those capital projects um, and then actually turn it over to a department when it's completed. Well, that's good to know. Uh, Troy, with your, your comment about we're not having the resources, <clears throat> that's true to a, I could identify, I think, a million dollars in the city budget that goes towards messaging, either through the communications department or through the access of folks who are who have that opportunity to make that case. It's there. The resources are there. It's just a matter of do you command them 
and use them the way you want to. That's our job. But if we just leave it in the hands of, no offense to bureaucrats, that's where it stays. But there is ample resources to conduct a communications campaign on behalf of anything that we might decide. You just redirect resources in a fashion. Thirteenth floor. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> Penny, is there a way? Um, I, I, has somebody been taking notes? I'm assuming. I've been trying to keep up. Okay. It's is there, is there a way that we can get um, like a bullet point view of of most of these goals? You know, sometime before Christmas. Oh yeah. Okay. I'll put something together in the next day or two and get it out. To, I'll get it to you and then you can help me kind of make sure we've got it all captured. Then we'll sit down. Yeah, I've been taking notes over here, but kind of chicken scratch and trying to keep up. So um, thank you. All right, guys, anything else? I'd like to commend Penny for her ability to keep track of these meetings. Her minutes are most descriptive and comprehensive and that's really good work Ben. Thank you. Second. Yes, thank you very much. All right, we've got nothing else guys. Um, thanks for dropping in and um, a great discussion. I think we've got some good action items to, to look at for next year and uh, <coughs> continue to make the park board bigger and better than ever. See you Tuesday. Well, hopefully we can solidify them by January. Thank you. See you on Monday. See you guys. Thanks everybody. Take care. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.